Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing amazing today. Are you excited for the Chatbot Summit? I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. We're all excited. So I want to start by asking you a question. Wait a second. Question, come up. Yes? Is there anyone who doesn't know this amazing young lady here? Okay, so just to be clear, this is the amazing Marilyn Monroe. And this famous video clip is from, their fa is from uh, her famous uh, movie, a uh, video clip called uh, Diamonds Are the Girl's Best Friend. And story tells that the production team took a lot of time to find those amazing, amazing diamonds she wear. As the story goes on, as the story goes on, they go through LA, a lot of stores in Beverly Hills, and then eventually they found the perfect diamond for Marilyn. And if Marilyn would be alive today, I, was, I am sure she would use rare card bot using IBM Watson. This bot allows you to choose the perfect diamond ring or any ring by color, size, shape, carrot, or everything that you want. It uses a very, very clean, and, uh, very clean UX, a very clean UI, and especially designed for users who are looking for good stuff. But let's leave Merlin aside. I'm Guy Cohen. I'm an IBM Cognitive and Cloud Specialist. Today, I'm working in IBM as a consultant and help other customers, like big companies or small companies, to create their amazing bot and fulfill their client needs. So if you have any questions, just feel free to talk to me. So, you and I both know that. Bots are everywhere. We are both in the STEM industry. We are both in the same place. We know that the world is going towards bots. But we also know that there are a lot of challenges that we are facing. So now, right now, I'm going to focus on several industries that IBM is working with. Uh, it's not every industry that we're working with, but those are the several mains that we're working with. And we'll go through some challenges they are facing. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Macy's. Is anyone here doesn't know what Macy's is? Great, so you all have a good taste in fashion. I like that. So Macy's is a big retail store in the United States. Challenges of Macy's are some of, uh, some of the challenges that Macy's faces are basically giving their clients the good and best quality of clothing in a very, very fast time. So the moment the client is stepping into a Macy's store, he knows where to get his Jimmy Choo's, he knows where to get his Prada watch, everything that he needs, and very, very fast. Another main um, industry that we're working with is tourism. Japan Airlines is the number one carrier in Japan. And as everyone in the crowd knows, that uh, airlines are in a cutting throat competition. Japan Airlines wants to create the best user experience for their clients so they can get the perfect vacation and the perfect price and in the perfect time. So unless if they're not going to do that, they're going to just run into United, American Airlines, and every other airline in the market. And the last one is banking industry. As you all know, banking are facing a lot of, a lot of crucial and very, very complex challenges those days. The, the number one challenge, in my opinion, is to gain their users' trust. You put the money in those banks, and those banks need to create a personal dialogue for their customers so they can get the best functionality from this dialogue. So we review a lot of challenges and in industries, but I really want to focus on one. I really want to focus on one, and this is going to be the North Face. So let's talk about the North Face. Is anyone here ever went into a North Face store and bought a jacket or a coat? How was the experience, guys? Awful, fine. I guess it's OK. But did you know that the North Face had more than 400 coats and jackets for men and women together? This is such a painful thing to do. If you look for a specific jacket, so how can I find it? I need some pockets. I need a windshield. I need a... Uh, I'm exhausted. This is a really, really complicated thing to do. But the North Face and IBM Watson created a simple bot to, to take a very, very complex process and turn it into a very simple process for the clients. And right now, we're going to see how. So I'm going on the North Face bot. This is for clients. You can go on the North Face website and just look at that. So right now, I'm going to type uh, 
I'm going on a trip into New York City next week. I'm going to have so much fun. It's going to be freezing cold, and Broadway tickets are very, very cheap at 8 a.m. in the morning. So good luck to me. NYC next month, next week. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going next month. And then the North Face bot actually wants to understand what are the conditions that I'm facing? What is the activity that I'm going to do? So he knows how to just recommend me the perfect code for the perfect activity. So I'm just going to tour around the city. Um, I don't do much. I'm a very lazy person. So I think it's the best. And then he asked me a very simple question. What is your lifestyle? What do you love to do? Are you a walker? Are you a hiker? Are you just love to just enjoy the time with friends? So I'm just going to go with jackets and coats because I don't need much than that. And the last question is that, are you a man or a woman? So I'm a man, surprising. Um, and then Watson and IBM, IBM Watson and the North Face calculates all those parameters into a very, very specific coats and jackets that you can get. It takes the location, it takes the weather, it takes a lot of parameters into consideration, and then you get three amazing high-ranked coats that you can choose from. How does it do that? It's really simple. You just click on one and you can see, based on your search, based on your search, what kind of properties you, you, you choose and what kind of um, preferences it was co in compared to your search. And then I just click Add to the Cart, and that's it. I'm done. I can get the North Face jacket. I can use it. What the North Face created is a very simple thing. They created a simple process for the users to get their code very, very, very fast, and also they can get a lot of money from that. So let's recap for a second. The North Face and other companies and industries are facing a lot of challenges those days, and bots are everywhere. We all know that. My five cents to you guys, five golden tips that will help you to choose and design the perfect and the most awesome bot that you can ever see in Israel, in the world, or wherever you are. So let's start with the first one. The first one, connection, 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 connection. This is such a huge and great cliche. I love this cliche. But what it does mean, what it means actually, Use a lot of Watson APIs and other SDKs that you can use to get, a, to get a richer and a full user experience and product for your users. So just add voice to text. Just talk to the bot instead of just type. Just use an image so it can actually process the image and give you a really good information from this image. Another major thing that you can do, connect it to external APIs. Connect it to TripAdvisor, connect it to your own cart if you are owning a store, if you are an e-commerce company. Just connect it to other APIs so you can create a richer and full cycle for your user. So it starts in one point and it ends in somewhere, but you can control where it ends. The second thing is that I want to talk about, simplicity. Keep it very, very simple. You are product managers, you are designers, you are interested in this field. You all know how important it is it is to create a simple dialogue, but think as the users. You don't really want to be very exhausted from talking to the bot. You don't really want to be exhausted from just giving a long answers. Just keep it, small, keep it short, keep it really, really simple. Ask hi, bye, give him some direction so the user will know what he's going to face with when he's coming to the bot. So it can be really messy. It can be really messy. That's what we all think. But why don't we create something very, very simple, like we see in the North Face bot? Or in another example, take 1-800-Flowers. This is a website or a company in the United States, whatever you want, that sells flowers as a gift to your loved ones, as a gift to your mother. Just talk to them in a very simple way. Hi, my name is Gwen. I'm your personal assistant to buying flowers. How can I help you? Boom. The user know what they need to do with a bot. And this is a very, very important one. If the user doesn't know, it's going to break the bot into pieces. The third thing that I'm going to talk about, clicking. Don't write. Clicking is a very, very important thing. Today in those bots, we use a lot of text. We use a lot of typing. Why don't we just use clicking in buttons, images, 
to go with the flow of the conversation. IBM Watson allows you to just put more buttons and images into your dialogue, and it's a very, very simple one. Is anyone familiar with that company? Okay, good, good. So Head is a company that sells sports accessories and sports gear. They joined IBM Watson and they created a, bracket, a tennis racket finder. So everyone who plays tennis can find his personal racket. So I'm not a big tennis fan or I'm just not playing tennis at all. But if I would play tennis, I would just like say, I'm a beginner, I have a bad swing shot, I want to be improved at, but it's all in clicks, as you can see here. You are all product managers and designers. You know that customers and users don't like to put their own age, the specific age, in a text box. So what this designer do? He just combined them into small groups and of age groups and just put them in a click button. So if I'm, a, so if I'm 40, and I'm not comfortable being in the 40 to 60 age group, I'm going to be totally between the 60 to 40 age group. Look at me, like I'm, a, I'm 16 in my soul. So this is a very, very simple way to do that. This is how you go with the flow with this bot, and then you click, 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 and then you get the perfect racket based on your talent and your physical um, preferences. The fourth thing I want to talk about is, please raise your hand if you don't agree with that, how much do you love engage, to be engaged with a good-looking content? You love that, right? All of us love that. We are users, we are product managers, we are designers. So please, if you design a bot, think about that when you design a bot. Users love that. Take that, for example. Japan Airlines created a very, very simple bot. It has a very, very tranquil and a very, very nice place to go on a vacation. And I'm not speaking Japanese, but believe me, I can go through this bot. Why? They have pictures. I see Hawaii back there, and I know, oh my god, I really want to go to that vacation. I'm going to click on this image, and then the bot is going to go with the flow. And the, the, the flow of the bot is going to keep going. And if you are speaking Japanese, it's a very simple one. You just click, you write, you type. Very simple way, very, very clean UX. Another thing that you want to know that, Japan Airlines use a lot of Watson SDKs and other external APIs. Why do I mean? Do you see this picture right here? The camera one, the camera icon? They use visual recognition, so users can upload pictures and then it analyzes that. And in the end of the bot, they connected it to the TripAdvisor API so they can learn more about the vacation they are going, get recommendation from this place, and then you give a really, really good closure for your user, which is a very important one. Another thing that I want to talk about is the rare car bot. We saw that you can, uh, you can use the scale to choose the budget. You can choose whatever you want, uh, your color, your diamond ring, your uh, shape and size of the ring, and that's it, and you get a new color, and you get a new ring. What do you think about that one? Is it pretty? No, not really. I agree with you. TD Bank created this bot. TD Bank is a huge bank in America. They have a green logo. Why did you decide to go with this kind of thing? Green, uh, TD Bank has a loyal customer that loves their logo. They love the impact of their logo. So they go with the green one, so their customer feel really, really comfortable with connecting to the bot. Another thing they do, they use unfeeling chatty. It's a really simple say, thing to say, hey, let's have a talk. Don't write. Just talk to me. I can handle that. This, one, this, this way, they just created another thing for their customer to use that. And another thing that I want to talk about, build measuring and learning. All of you are familiar with the Lean Startup methodology. In the Lean Startup methodology, you are building a product, you always measure in the process, and if it doesn't come up as much as you want or the market is expected that, you pivot. This is a methodology you can totally implement while building a chatbot with IBM Watson. You can always, always measure your improvement of the bot and then recognize the hot topic that customers are talking about. And if you want to improve your bot, and you, that's it, you're done. They know what you're going to talk about. Just change the bot very, very easily, and that's it. The bot is transferred into something else. Very simple thing to do. I want to sum up the 21st Marilyn Monroe's, the 21st century is Marilyn Monroe's, would totally buy their stuff online. They would use chatbots to buy flowers, sportswear, and even their diamonds. And as much as Marilyn loved her diamonds, I'm sure you all 
product managers, UX designers, and everyone who loves to hear this talk, of this talk would love good-looking products and good-looking bots. Thank you so much for coming to see me. I'm going to be in the IBM booth afterwards, so feel free to talk to me. Thank you very much, Guy. Keep it simple, but make sure you have a rich experience for your users. Yes, small question you want to ask? Sure. I'll Put just two buttons. Quickly say the question. So, how do you prevent people from typing? That's the question. Yeah. So, when the users see buttons, they are intent to click on that. It's a very simple like mechanism that we use. Just whenever you type your question, just feel like, hey, this is this uh, information was useful? Yes, no. That's it. Done. They are not gonna type yes or no. They're just gonna see the button, click. Okay, I see oh, that. Belgium is something else. I can tell you that I know a lot of customers, like uh, uh, customers that are facing customer service, they love that instead of typing, because it's very, very easier for them to go through the flow. Um, so in my opinion, and we can talk about it later if you want, we can totally add more buttons and say, hey, you know that instead of typing, you can put some, you can just click on the button and that's it, they know it. Thank you very much, Guy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.